the two things about this. First of all, it sounds a bit odd. What was it? Something like I thought I was having implants and I had a lift. How can that happen? Can that, does that sort of stuff happen? You thought you're having implants, you had a lift? Crazy. Um, and the the really there's two messages here. The first message is one person's good result is another person's bad result and vice versa because the, there is some issues with the scarring which i hope hope to show you when as soon as i get my technical team to um get the fit picture up but aside from the issues of the scarring this patient's also unhappy with the shape of the implants because they're teardrop implants and i think she feels that they should have been fuller and this is why this sort of surgery is so subjective a good result is so subjective because i've got to be honest i think this result is a good result looking at it without even you know hearing anything from this patient it's a it's a good result but um but she's obviously unhappy because she's sent me photos and is already unhappy with everything so uh therefore you know it's not a good result is it if she's unhappy so it is so important to try and get your surgeon for me giving you advice get your surgeon to understand what your goals are and as a surgeon it's so important for us to get aligned with our expectations with the patient's expectations because if we don't deliver on what the patient thinks they're not going to be happy and that is so important in this line of work more so than um <laughs> I can't get the photo up. Oh my god. It's okay. It's okay. It's fine, guys. Listen, I'm I'm fine. Don't worry about me. I'm absolutely fine. All right. I'm <laughs> I've got a plan. So I'm just you know, I'm you wouldn't even know that there's something if someone from the outside was watching this, they wouldn't even know that something bad's happening, you know? Um so I'm just gonna do something while you're waiting. So, yes, you have to have your expectations aligned because actually the result of the surgery is quite good. And um, but the patient's not happy because she because she wanted different implants. They put you've given her a lift and they've been a teardrop implants. I mean, goodness me. And she didn't want a lift and she wanted round implants. So that sounds uh, insane to me. But I guess that's you know, I don't know. I don't. But um, so in terms of the surgery, yes, you've had teardrop implants. You could have rounder implants, which would be fuller, which sounds like what you want. Uh, so I always say the shape and the profile of the implant is really, really important. It's much more important than the size of the implant. Everyone talks about the size of the implant, but the shape is going to make you unhappy. The size is going to make you like, well, oh, you know what, I wish I'd be a bit bigger, not properly unhappy, just a bit like that. If the shape is wrong, you'll be properly unhappy. Oh, God, it's too flat or too full so the shape guys is more important than the size remember that shape is more important than size i wouldn't say size is not important but it is nowhere near as important as people think shape is more important than size so while my other screen is loading up uh, oh yeah the other thing was the scarring is bad so the scarring is bad so she's had a lift i mean what a nightmare you weren't expecting a lift and then you get bad scarring so because the big thing about the lift is the scarring is on the front of the breast the scarring is around the nipple so that, that and the scarring has stretched a bit so that is an issue and the first thing, if someone has bad, bad scarring after surgery, the first thing I'll say to them is how, how did, maybe not the first thing, but one of the things I'll say to them is how did it heal? Did it all heal up okay? So if you say yes, it all healed up okay, to be honest with you, that makes me worried. Because if it didn't heal up okay, if you had a bit of infection, if you had a bit of a delayed healing, which can happen, and that is the reason you got bad stretch scarring, then that makes me think, well, hold on a minute, if I can do the surgery and maybe we're, we're lucky and we don't get infection or delayed healing or problems, then the scarring can be good. If you didn't have problems with the healing, if it all healed up fine, and yet still your scarring is not very good, it's a bit stretched and it's not quite as good as we would like it to be, that makes me think, well, what am I going to do different? Why won't it just be as bad when I do it as when you had it last time? Because that's when we do surgery for scar revision. We've got to think, what can we do differently to what the guy before did? Um, and as I say, if you have a reason for the stretched scarring, then fine, that might be a, a goer. But if you haven't got a reason for the stretched scarring 
it does sl slightly ring alarm bells with me and think, well, I would worry that if I did it, it came out just the same. Now, you might say, oh, you're a great surgeon, blah, de, blah. Obviously, that's true. I think you and I both know that. But it doesn't matter how good a surgeon you are, we all have problems. I've got to be honest, full disclosure, we all have problems. Any, any surgeon who tells you they don't have problems is either not being honest with you or is not doing enough surgery. We all have problems. It's a bit like gambling. There are good gamblers and bad gamblers, and good gamblers can put the odds in their favor and will win more often than they lose. But still, they'll lose sometimes. You know, still, you're going to lose sometimes. You cannot. It's it's horrible because you want to win every time. You never want to lose. But it doesn't matter how good you are. There are always situations where the scarring wouldn't be as good as we want. There's always a risk of infection. There's always a risk of um, delayed wound healing, of un basically an unsatisfactory result. So any surgeon get an unsatisfactory result. So someone coming for revision surgery after an unsatisfactory result, we've got to think, what can I do differently? So I've got to be honest, I would worry about revising these scars. Um, they were a bit stretched. <laughs> Actually... I don't know, actually, I, yes, I have got an idea how I can show them to you. Um, are we worried about, uh, uh, about, about revising these scars if there was no reason for the delayed wound healing in the first place? Because I would worry that it might be the same outcome if I did it or anyone else did it. Now, if you're saying you don't like the implants and you want to have the implants changed well that maybe gives you another reason for surgery but if we were just changing the implants we wouldn't have to touch the scar around the areola because it's the scar around the areola that's stretched so um it might be worth revising that scar around the areola to make it thinner there'd always be a scar that's the other thing you've got to realize if you're having a scar revision there's still going to be a scar the aim is to make it slightly less stretched and a thinner scar but there's always a risk it can go stretched again so yeah, so that those are the two issues. I think the one issue is this: the, 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 the I think I think I've got to be honest. It's a good result, but you're not happy, so you could have a a, a fuller implant. It would be a rounder look, uh, and that might make you happy. But it's unfortunate that you weren't aligned with expectations uh, preoperatively. And the secondly is the scarring, which, as I say, could be revised, but there's no guarantee that it would be a better scar than what you have now. Obviously, the aim is to make it better, but there's no guarantee of it, of that.